Today we are looking at how we can empower Africa and of course the role of the continent in uh, global transformation. We are touching uh, those very key points which are vital in uh, uh, defining Africa's role at uh, the international level. From leadership, we let us look at uh, the, uh, the, the, the type of politics, of course, uh, Dr. Edi Erika, let me uh, bring this with you because when you li listen to some uh, uh, critics, they will say the world has been hijacked by a collective uh, West, like people who define how things are being run in the world uh, at the economic, political level, and of course, the consequences faced uh, by uh, nations around the world. But then let's not, let us practicalize it from the leadership aspect. Let's look at how Africa's politics is actually an impediment to the continent's uh, 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 internal transformation and of course how it has reduced the continent's voice at uh, the global stage. Uh, brief question and uh, I will uh, look it more as uh, an introspective uh, question. You know, there are times when uh, we definitely as African need to, uh, as the Chino Achebe uh, said, you know, we'll start looking at when the rain starting beating us. And without this kind of approach, of course, you know, uh, we will uh, remain in the uh, situation of uh, pointing fingers, right? Uh, at uh, endogenous factors, but there are plenty of, uh, I mean, looking at exogenous factors, and there are plenty of internal factors as well. As you said, you know, we're relating to um, African uh, politics being uh, an impediment. My colleagues, you know, uh, have uh, said a lot uh, about them, and I will touch, you know, on a, uh, a few points. But the perspective from which I'm speaking in it here is always the perspective of an Afro-optimistic person. And I have been on this show many times with other people who have embarked on the Afro-pessimistic you know, uh, direction. I believe that even being an Afro-optimistic person does not exclude uh, or, or preclude me from looking at what we are doing wrong. Politically, the things that we are doing wrong are uh, many or plenty of them. Number one, we need to question why from what we have termed the revival of uh, democracies in the 90s, 90s up to today, we are witnessing a rollback of all that the world we potentially gain. Some examples. We entered the 1990s with uh, this, again, you know, erroneous sometimes, you know, uh, uh, analysis that uh, Africa's, you know, uh, economic and political lethargy in the 1980s, especially, uh, was uh, due to uh, the political leadership. And therefore, we needed to amend our constitutions. We needed to have, you know, two terms, you know, uh, presidents, uh, for instance, and making sure that, you know, we don't have a people who stay in power forever. Let's look at what the continent represents today. To what extent, number one, we have been able to fulfill that. Number two, to what extent, even in countries where this order has kind of been respected, like in Benin uh, and many others, to what extent this again, you know, have really uh, translated into a real change of the political arena or our political institutions in such a way that you know we move toward a real participation of African people in they um, what in their own politics. I uh, read uh, an Afrobarometer, you know, uh, that I uh, I love their surveys. Uh, not long ago, I think it was in 2022 that they, they uh, did the survey, including uh, countries or citizens from Ghana and other countries, to find out that people are questioning more and more whether elected officials or elections are the right way for them to have their services or their needs met. The question is simple. Yes, the election has been democratic, but is the regime that is being in place democratic. In other words, to what extent people are being consulted on important things 
that engage their lives. And lives in here means where they work, how they work, where they live, and how they live. Let me take some examples. In Liberia, the government, prior to the elections that happened on October 10th, signed a concession to a company that will award that company over a quarter century, I believe 30 years, right? A mining uh, a company or mining corporation. The question here is, why so fast? Have the people who will be directly impacted by the mining or the exploitation in those areas where they're consulted? Do you understand? If they were consulted, what is this that you know were labor unions, workers' associations, whether they're in the informal or formal sector uh, of employment, have said about that? Did the Liberian legislature take the time to really consult and get feedback from people? Were they able to present this case again to the Liberian people, for instance, and say, we have done XYZ of analysis? And this is uh, the return on investments, both at the economic monetary level, but also at uh, the human right level. Because when a company comes in and pushes people away, you are not just moving people away from their lanes, you are also moving people away from what? The control routes. And we know per the... Uh, uh, what's the uh, human rights, you know, uh, uh, UDHR, which is the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, pushing people away from the lane, putting them away from what is the cultural roots can be considered a genocide. It is a human crime. It's a human rights violation. This is one example. An example is in the making and conversations around that, and uh, you can now uh, consult you know, with the uh, international press to read about that. The same Liberian government is also in negotiation with a United uh, Emirate, you know, Arab Emirates you know, World Company to sign about 1 million hectares of forest for their use, okay, over 25 years. 25 years is a long period of time. We don't care about the amount of money. The point I'm making here is, what is the role, the voice of the citizens, of the workers, of the men and the women? Politically, that's where we are. When we have a, 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 a elected official. So that's one aspect of it. The second aspect, coming again or taking the 1990s as a, 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 our barometer in and here. It has also been said that we need to establish some independent electoral commissions to guarantee the credibility of electoral processes. Clarice, name one country in which or where election took place without opposition party or sometimes ruling parties trying foul or accusing the independent electoral commission of being or of conniving, or you know, having some dubious, you know, uh, dealings in there. It has been a failure. If you name one country for any one country where it has been accepted, then you have a ten other countries where it has always led to some conflicts. Cote d'Ivoire in 2010, and many others, even in Cameroon, there's always been. So, which means that there too we have a problem. We also have a problem about uh, who are the voters. How do we expect people? To go to election, electors, voters, citizens, to go to elections without knowing whether the, the names are duly on their voters' lists. These are some political uh, questions that we have in there. Uh, other things that you know we have seen as well is uh, the uh, independence or the checks and balances. And I'm going to stop on that one. It's true that after 23 years, if we take 1990 as a bar, that today you have national legislatures that are completely independent or can act independently from the executive branch, can act or the, the judicial system that can independently from the legislature or the legislative branch or from the executive branch. 
we continue to have a very powerful head of states who can decide when the rain should come to the country, when the rain should stop, when the sun should shine, when the, the moon should come, or when people should leave, when people should not leave, when people should breathe, when they should not breathe. With a heavy hand of, of these apparatuses. So those internal political issues are important for me. And the final point, are they political powers? As we talked about that, let's talk about you know women empowerment, for instance. Some of the African countries agree that hey, we need to increase the representation of a woman in a decision making bodies, national, you know, legislatures, executive branch, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But look at the political parties themselves, who are actually the one breeding leaders. Many of their leaders in those political parties actually represent women. Only eight percent of the candidates in the recent Liberian elections. Only 8% of the candidates are women. You see? And this is symptomatic or a clear indication of what is happening within the political parties themselves. Therefore, I believe that, you know, in terms of reforms, the civil society has a role to play. Until in African countries we continue to leave politics, quote unquote, purely in the hands of what we call political parties we are going to run into those kinds of problems. But if there is some sort of a reshuffling of the political arena, where even unions position themselves to say, we need to elect labor-friendly people in legislature to make sure that the rights of the workers are you know, attended to, we need to elect more women in such a way. We need to elect more young people to take care of the need of young people. We need to elect people who are more oriented toward this than toward that. I believe that, you know, but politically, we can also start seeing some tectonic changes within Africa, which definitely can lead to strengthening our political institution. And definitely, they're going to be. If we wanted to have a more Pan-African leaders in power, then we need to make that work there. The more Pan-African leaders that we have in those national legislatures, in those executive branches, and even judicial branches, I'm sure that you know any project at the African Union level will move in the right direction, for instance, and then we can uh, earn a much better dividend.